lie on your backs, please. And today we get to do what I consider to be one of the most classic Feldenkrais lessons, the pelvic clock. And the reason it's classic is because a lot of other methods and, and people who practice techniques have tried to incorporate this in various forms into what they're doing and what they're teaching. And it's a fabulous extension experience of your three-dimensionality and, of course, your center of gravity rests in your pelvic area, two inches below your belly button. It is your power center. So as you lie there, begin to notice how do you sense your pelvis lying on the floor? What do you know as the back of your pelvis? You feel differences in the amount of weight resting on the right side and left side of your pelvis. Lying here when there's no pressure on them, can you have an awareness of your six bones? or know what those might feel like when you sit. Are you aware that the shape of the pelvis is really like a bowl, very open in the front and more closed in the back? It holds your intestines, your lower organs, your sexual organs, and protects them with the help of the abdominal muscles in front. So often when we use the phrase putting our hands on our hips, you're really putting your hands on the top rim of the pelvis. And if you rock your pelvis forward and back, you can almost imagine that if there was water in it, it would slosh forward over the front of your pubic bone and it would be held back into the back part of your pelvis. Notice how you're breathing and how your pelvis, that area of your lower abdomen, is influenced by the breath. Do you breathe into that area at all? Or is your breath more above your belly button or in your chest and ribs? Intentionally try to extend your lower abdomen with your inhalation and let it relax with your exhalation. Just see what that's like. For many people, if they haven't been exposed to this idea of extending or expanding the lower abdomen with what is often referred to as abdominal breathing, it can be very difficult. Culturally, we are taught to suck our abdomen in. So to let it go, oh my goodness, your guts might fall out or your entire self-image. And then a couple times intentionally hold your lower abdomen flat as you inhale, really letting your chest rise with the inhalation as your lungs fill and your chest lower, keeping all the breath above your belly button into your ribs and sternum and chest. Let that go and just breathe naturally. And let yourself bend your knees up one at a time by first rolling them out to the side, letting your knee drop out to the side and then bringing it up. If you've done some of the other lessons, you've experienced this as frog legs, a much more natural way for us to bend and lengthen our legs in congruency with the hip joint. And with your knees bent up like this, gently begin pressing through your feet and releasing. 
compressing and releasing. And just feeling where does the pressure go through which part of the feet. And you might be able to notice differences between the right foot and the left foot. Maybe you press a little more firmly through one foot. Do you use your heels more than the balls of your feet? Just begin to play around and see if you can find a good, solid way to fully use both feet. And then feel the connection as you press through your feet. Feel how that pressure is translated up through the legs and then the hip connects into the pelvis and feel that your pelvis can begin to roll back a little bit, flattening into the floor. And as you release the pressure through your foot, your pelvis rolls forward and you have a little arch in your lower back. And do that several times, really feeling your pelvis rolling back and arching up. And notice what you're doing with your breathing. Are you pacing the rocking of your pelvis in some way with the rhythm of the inhalation and exhalation? And then pause the movements in your pelvis for a moment and bring your attention back to your breath. Gently place your fingertips on your lower abdomen below your belly button, letting the palms of your hand rest outward. And intentionally again, breathe into your lower abdomen. Imagine as if you had a balloon in there. And as you breathe in, you're filling that balloon and it's expanding forward to the sides into the front of your sacrum and as you breathe out the air is emptying out of the balloon up through your trunk and out your nose and mouth And then do the movement of rocking your pelvis again while breathing, pressing through your feet, feeling your pre- pelvis rock back, your lower back coming closer to the floor, and your pelvis rolling forward and your low back arching away from the floor. And as you do this, imagine that you are lying on the face of a clock dial, so right beneath your sacrum and pelvis is an old-fashioned clock dial. So as you press to your feet and you roll your pelvis up, flattening your lower back, you're rolling your pelvis up to 12 o'clock. And as you release the pressure through your feet and you arch your lower back, your pelvis rolls down towards 6 o'clock. And notice how much of yourself you can feel as there are several things to attend to. There's your feet and the pressure through your feet. There's the connection in through your hip joints. There's the feeling, that line that your pelvis is rocking on between 12 and 6 on your clock. There's the flattening of your spine, your breath, the expanding of your abdomen. You may even be able to feel as you rock your pelvis forward and back how that begins to influence or communicate with the rest of your spine up into your neck between your shoulder blades. You may sense your chin lifting and lowering.
and just pause for a moment. It's really a skill to be able to choose where you want to take your mind. You can take it to the whole of your experience, all of you feeling the influence of the rocking. You can take it to the parts, what my feet feel like, what my toe feels like, what my back feels like. And you can use this training of the mind in your everyday experiences in life. Do I want to relax into my body and be receptive to this situation? Or do I want to focus on this one detail that's going to drive me crazy all day? And you'll feel that your whole body will organize around that detail if you choose to let your mind stay stuck on that. So again, come back to pressing and releasing. Really feeling that line between 6 and 12 as your pelvis rocks along it. And notice how straight is that line. Do you have a little jagged D in it? A little stop and go? Does it curve a little more to the left or to the right? Really let yourself just go with your asymmetries. Let them be okay. Appreciate them. Move gently and softly. Be easy with yourself. And then pause in the middle between the tip of six and the tip of nine. Pause in the middle and begin to explore your way towards three and nine. So depending on your viewpoint, we'll put three be kind of behind your left hip or towards the left side of your pelvis and nine towards the right. So what does it take? It's a little more complicated. How do you organize shifting your weight side to side so that the back of your pelvis is drawing some kind of line between three and nine. And notice as you begin to figure out how to do this, did you change your breath in any way? And again, notice how smooth is the line. And what else happens? How do your feet organize their pressure? It's very different. Is it evenly side to side through your feet or does one foot push a little more as you go to three? And does the other foot push a little more as you go to nine? And how do your ribs respond? What does your chest know about what your pelvis is doing? What about your shoulders and shoulder blades? And again, in the background of all this, how are you doing with just gently inhaling into your lower abdomen and exhaling? Great. And then just pause in the middle, let your legs down if that's comfortable for you. And just listen to the influence that the lesson so far has had on your system. What did you feel about your pelvis when we started? What did you know? What's waking up in you? And when I say what's waking up in you, does your attention go to what what of my pain is noticing that I'm doing something? Or are you able to begin to attend to more and more parts of your body that are working in your favor, that are tirelessly conspiring towards your wellness? As you gradually release the pattern, the habit of the mind, to focus on the same thing over and over. Remembering the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over 
and expecting different results. So in these lessons, we have the opportunity to do something different, to do something unusual, and to open our bodies and our minds to other possibilities, other possible ways to engage in a happy and healthy life. So again, please bend your knees up one at a time, letting them roll out to the side as you draw them up and bend them and stand through your feet. And come back to the simple movement, but don't do the whole movement the first time. Start with a very gentle pressure through your feet. How small can you make that line from 6 to 12? And just kind of grow it in your system as you repeat it, pressing and releasing. Just feeling the whole of you responding to this little wave. It's like you're making a little wave in your pelvis. And then next time you're up at 12 o'clock, stay there <coughs> and begin to explore your way through the upper left quadrant. So from 12 to 1, two and three and back to twelve. So staying in that upper left quadrant, how do you organize movement so that your pelvis rolls across each of those numbers? Or what do you notice? Maybe it really doesn't roll across each of those numbers. Maybe you need to move a little more slowly, use your imagination a little more fully, Maybe it's better if you make the movement smaller. And again, are you coordinating your breath in any way with this? Are you able to keep the inhalation full in your belly? So as you begin to move your pelvis, your belly is moving, your breath is moving. You can almost imagine that there's liquid in your pelvis and you're sloshing it over to the left and you're sloshing it back. Maybe you're finding a way to paint the inside of your pelvis with this movement. Now there's an interesting image. And also what happens in the rest of your trunk and your ribs, your chest, your shoulders and just rest in the middle. And then continue to explore the left side starting at 12, rolling down from 1, 2 and 3 but continuing on down through 4, 5 and 6 on to back up. In fact, when you get to 6, why don't you stay at 6 and just go straight through the middle up to 12 and back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, straight up to 12. So we're always going clockwise. And feel how smooth is that arc. You're making an arc on the left side of your pelvis. If there was some sort of fluid or paint resting on the back of, or really on the front of your sacrum, what parts would it easily slosh around as you make this movement? And what parts are harder for you to find? A little more restriction in your movement to move in that way. Are there places where you actually sort of tighten your breath or your jaw a little bit? And places where your breath easily flows in and out? And what is your strategy? Do you just feel the smaller individual parts, the part of the pelvis, the part of the abdomen, part of the hips or the feet? Or can you just rest back into the whole of the sensation of this movement on the left side of your body? 
should be alternate. Notice how what your shoulders are doing. Are they just kind of going along? Or are they holding you solid onto the floor? Notice what your head does. Does it begin to tilt a little bit with this mo motion to the left? And then again, just rest in the middle, let your legs long. And now that we've spent a little bit of time more on one side of the body than the other, is it easier to notice differences from the left side to the right side? Not just in your pelvis, but what about in your left hip joint compared to your right? The whole of your left leg and your right leg, its weight, its length. level of readiness. What about your lower back? And your breath. Does your abdomen feel any differently on the left? Fill with air, not feel, but fill with air differently on the left or the right? Do your lungs fill differently with air on the left or the right? And then I want you to roll to your sides and come up to sitting, please. And Putting as best as you can the soles of your feet together with your knees open wide to the side, leaning back on your hands if you're able to without having too much pressure on your wrists or your shoulders. And see, can you do the six to nine movement sitting like this, rolling your pelvis back and rolling it forward, just six to nine. So when you roll back, what does your trunk want to do? Can you feel the tendency to go into a, a permitted slouch, an intentional slouch? And when you roll forward, can you feel your whole spine participating in an extension, a lifting up? Rolling back. Your head might want to drop as you roll back, as if it's looking down at your belly button or between your legs and rolling forward, letting everything lift up. Your belly comes forward, your sternum comes up, and you might look more upward with your head and your eyes. Feeling, letting the, the movements of the spine come from the pelvis. The pelvis rolls back and the spine just follows, rolling back. The pelvis rolls forward and the spine follows. Everything starts from the movement of the pelvis, that center of power in your abdomen. And what if you, a couple times, were to take your head in the opposite direction? So you roll your pelvis back, but you take your head up to the ceiling, just as far as is comfortable. And you roll your pelvis forward, your belly sticks out, and you drop your head down towards your belly. And you breathe. And let your jaw and your tongue be soft. And then go back to the first way, letting everything move more congruently. Pelvis rolls forward, sternum lifts, head lifts up to the ceiling, pelvis rolls back, the spine follows, and everything just relaxes down as you look downward. And just feeling that six to nine between your sits bones. breathing. 
And then roll back on your backs again, please. So we have the feelings of movement. And then we have the feelings of emotion. And they're intimately connected. So just lying here, what are the feelings of emotion that you feel participating in this lesson today? What's stirring in you? I, I might feel tired. I feel relaxed. I feel appreciative. I feel curious. I feel bored. What feelings are coming up in you as you engage in really attending to yourself? Not something we do much in today's way of living life. And then again, please bend your knees up one at a time. And reconnect with that sensation of rocking between six and nine, pressing through your feet feeling your legs connect through your hip joint into your pelvis. Your pelvis rolls back and influences your spine all the way up to your neck and head. Your spine may influence your shoulder blades or your ribs. And then next time you roll down to six, stay there and begin exploring your right lower quadrant between six and nine. So finding the numbers on your clock, six, seven, eight, nine, and back to six. And is there anything different about beginning to explore the right side than your experience of the left side? For many people, one side is clearly easier than the other side. Or one quadrant is clearly easier than another quadrant. Some numbers you'll clearly be able to pass through and feel movement easily in your hips and pelvis. While other numbers you might kind of make a straight or jagged line through. And then continue up to 10, 11, and 12. And when you get to 12, again, go straight down to 6 and come back up, continuing the clockwise movement, exploring the whole right side of your clock and what that involves in your feet, in your hips, in your chest and ribs. Your shoulder blades. And then just pause for a moment. And then let's experience the whole circle clockwise. So going up to 12 and just really taking your time. You might start with a smaller circle or a larger circle. But what's it like to go clockwise through each of the numbers? How do you experience the upper left quadrant and the lower left quadrant? The lower right quadrant and the upper right quadrant? As you begin to make a full circle as you do this, have you changed the breathing in your lower abdomen? Are you able to keep that full and smooth? Can you imagine the liquid resting on the front of your sacrum and you're sloshing it around and around? Which parts of your, the front of your pelvis don't get sloshed on? and which parts are drenched. Good. And then just pause. 
rest for a moment. Let your legs down. And again, roll to your sides and sit up, please, in the same fashion, so that the soles of your feet are together or at least in approximation to each other and your knees are open and you're leaning on your hands. And then just go back and forth from six to nine, reacquaint yourself with that. And then see if you can discover, I, I said six and nine, I meant six and 12. And then see if you can discover three and nine, side to side. So how do you organize your ribs? your spine? Do you use your feet or not use your feet in a particular way? Do you change your breath? And roll up to 12 and see if you can just gently begin making that circle clockwise around the clock. Is your jaw relaxed? Are you breathing? What do your shoulders do? How do you <coughs> use your hands and your shoulders as part of this circle? It's a much different kinetic chain to be sitting through your sits bones, holding yourself up through your hands, but doing pretty much the same movement in your pelvis. But the rest of your trunk is freer. It's not there's no restriction from the weight of yourself on the ground. So the rest of your trunk, your spine and ribs, your shoulders, your head has much more freedom to respond to and participate in the fullness of this movement. And then reverse direction. Again, noticing how round is your circle? What kind of creative clock shape have you made that somebody would sell in one of those gift catalogs? Which numbers are missing from your day? And when you're ready, rest back again and let it all go. Feel your breath. Feel it filling your lower abdomen, the sides of your inside pelvis, the front of your sacrum. If you imagine that balloon in there, it even goes downward into your pelvic floor, upward into your diaphragm. How free can you let this area of your body be that culturally is often we get so many spoken and unspoken messages to not be free in our pelvis. Various circumstances often put us into fight or flight reactions where we hold our breath and certainly tighten our lower abdomens. Other messages give us ideas that moving in our pelvis are somehow related to sexuality and that that's a bad thing. So we change how we move from the time we're little girls and told to put our knees together or whatever messages we got around that area to not stick our butts out or to stick them out more. So much of our posture and our movement stems from our pelvis and there are so many unconscious ideas imposed upon us that we took on as children about how to move in that area. Again, please bend your knees up one at a time and just really feel the connection that the soles of your feet are making. Feel how your breath is filling the imaginary balloon in your lower abdomen 
then just slowly begin making clockwise circles again. Feeling the influence of these circles on your spine, your ribs, your shoulder blades and head. And where else do you feel circles? What's happening in your knees? The soles of your feet, your hip joints. And then just reverse the circle. Begin to explore counterclockwise. What's different? Is this maybe your preferred way? You've been waiting this whole lesson for me to finally let you go the other way. Or you didn't listen and you tried it earlier because you couldn't stand the wait. What parts of your circle are easily defined, easily accessed, smooth and comfortable? And then again, pause in the middle. And just imagine where each of the numbers are on your clock. And I'm going to have you randomly cross through the middle of your clock to touch these different numbers with the back of your pelvis. So let's start down at 6 o'clock and move your pelvis to touch 1 o'clock. And just take your time and cross over to 9 o'clock and 2 o'clock and 10 o'clock and 5 o'clock and 7 o'clock and 1 o'clock and 11 o'clock and 8 o'clock and 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock and 12 and 6 and 12 and rest please. Nothing better to break up a pattern than to not have a pattern. So what does that create in you? How are you feeling now? What are the sensations in your body that are waking up, that are tingling, that are drawing your attention? What are the good sensations? What are the life-giving sensations? How do we choose to bring our attention to that which is life-giving, supportive, Not that we want to ignore pain, but once pain has let us know it's there, it often gets an inordinate amount of our attention, an imbalanced amount of our attention. So one last time, please bend your knees up. And begin making clockwise, I'm sorry, counterclockwise circles. Counterclockwise around your clock and just really make them big and full, just sloshing that liquid around the inside of your pelvis, feeling your ribs and your sternum and your feet, just everything round and round. You could even go faster and faster. How fast can you go making it easy and your breath full, and your abdomen expanded with each breath? And from there, begin making them just gradually a little smaller, gradually a little slower, and continue a little smaller, a little slower, smaller and smaller until you begin spiraling into the center. And eventually your counterclockwise circle is so small 
and so slow that only you know. From the outside, it's undetectable, imperceptible. And when you've almost come to a standstill at the center, begin very slowly at first reversing your circle and slowly, gradually increasing the spiral in a clockwise direction, spiraling out and out and out into the fullness of your clock, your circle, your experience. Just feeling your whole system again, just responding to the swirling around. The breath is full. Your whole body is connected to your pelvis, to your center to the core of your being. And when you're ready, take a full rest. And imagine yourself moving from the center throughout this next week. Imagine just reaching up into your kitchen cupboard, but having your arm be an extension from the core of your being. Imagine walking into your office and talking to a co-worker or a client or a boss and talking from your core. Imagine driving to work and you're thinking and thinking and thinking and then you just settle your mind and you feel your belly and you feel your sits bones and you drop down into the present moment. And your sensations remind you that now is all that matters. And take your time to roll to your side and come up to sitting eventually coming up to standing and take several moments to walk around, to stand, to feel what it's like now to be in your body with this new experience, with whatever new sensations are available to you and have a great week. <laughs>